Hello everyone, welcome to an overview of what's new in version 17 of device 42. Just briefly pulling up a blog post for version 17, which will have all the details of major as well as minor changes uh, that were included here. So feel free to navigate to blog.device42.com. You'll see that as the, the first post there. I'll go over some of the new functionality that I'll be showing, but let's take a look at what's available, starting with the new resources menu. So you'll notice some highlights and changes in organization to the top menu to uh, start to assist with the organization of where resources are in the new menu framework, as well as the new menu I'll be showing for resources is a UI framework we're going to start to include in many of the other object types to update the UI, make it have better performance and more responsive. So much of what you're going to see is also starting to get incorporated into other objects and device types and features as we continue through the next year. So firstly, all managed resources, this will be all of the uh, objects that are now included as resources, which is primarily including uh, cloud path services like AWS S3, RDS, uh, Microsoft Managed SQL, Google Cloud SQL, as well as your arrays. Uh, so recently we've added source discovery in version 17 as well, and you'll find all the arrays and various components there. And then cloud databases, so to go directly to your AWS, GCP, and Azure uh, databases that have been discovered. So first let's start just with the menu itself. So a few th things you'll start to notice is the filters now are more dynamic. So you can pick and choose what filters you would like to apply and have on display um, as you select various filters. So I can look at different resource types. So if I want to select all the different arrays, let's also go ahead and include S3 to get a view of our arrays and cloud storage. And then this URL can be bookmarked. So you can click on the bookmark here to save those filters and come back to it immediately after you have used these. It, within the resources, you of course have the search terms that you can use. So I can search across any of these different object types directly here and continue to filter as needed. Additionally, something that is entirely new, there is an advanced search. So it's gonna pre-populate based upon the existing basic filters I've selected, but I can modify this uh, to get a bit more granular. So this is very similar to uh, search queries and, and you may have seen in other tools. So I can say if a resource in here contains uh, public, it's going to validate the syntax of that. And I can also say and statements and include other different options. So if I want to say a particular region and we'll do a contain scan region contains, I just want AWS East. And nothing to match that. So maybe if I go back a bit here, remove the region, then do a search there, and we find that our resources came back matching that criteria. So there's different ways you can play around with that, give it a bit more functionality on how you're searching and collecting data or viewing data available from within resources. Then I can select any of these to drill into them and get more detail about them as you might expect. So let's take a look at an RDS resource. So in discovery and cloud, we have extended the options now to also allow you to collect uh, Route 53, which is AWS or uh, RDS and uh, EBS as well as uh, S3. And similar with uh, Azure and GCP, you'll have new options to get their database services available for them. And this is the data that's gonna be collected from that. So this is an example of pulling from AWS Aurora. So it'll have all the various properties related to that, as well as on the right side would be related resources. So it's documenting the endpoints for this particular RDS. So it's the port it listens on and the FTDN of the service. And now, there's many different configuration properties and these are dynamic. So as opposed to devices or various other object types where the data model is rel relatively static, something to be aware of for resources, they are 
typically always changing and you might find you know, a database resource in AWS is gonna have different properties from an Azure or GCP resource, some things that are gonna be relevant strictly to resources within that cloud service provider. Similar idea with storage arrays, some components and configuration details are gonna vary depending on the type of array. So this is a more dynamic uh, structure for us and supports the various different configuration details that will change across these resources. So it's not as static as other object types would have been previously. And so there's a cluster here, so we can drill into that. And then on the cluster, we now see other Aurora instances related to that. So I was just drilling into one of the nodes, which was acting as a writer. And here we're now in the master node. And something available on any resources that have relationships is the resource map. So we can see from this cluster, the two related RDS nodes for that cluster. And I can click on them and then drill into any of those, or even double click from that view. So I'll have that view to filter on different relationships and see the different parent-child logical relationships between resources. Next up, source discovery. So this is an entirely new functionality available in Device 42, really extending our ability to perform discovery against arrays. And this is primarily using API or SMIS-based discovery against these systems. It's quite straightforward, very same structure to discovery as you would expect in various other systems. So you can see, just like you would in any other discovery job, whether it's Windows, Mix, others, you can include IP addresses, lists of host names, as well as credentials to log into those systems. Then your schedule for the job, as well as if you would like to collect performance data for them. So similar to ADM sampling or resource utilization sampling, you can set up 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour interval to go and collect performance metrics of those systems. And whether it's successful or not, it will report back on that. So I included two IPs, one's not responding, one is failing, but don't worry, we do have other discovery jobs collecting data successfully, but you can see the status of that. There is a failure, it'll get reported there. So let's go to resources and arrays. And here we'll be able to see all the related arrays that we've discovered. So I've got Infinidat, NetApp, as well as an Isilon. So actually, let's actually take a look at the Isilon. So here we have the top level of the array. So we'll see model, serial number details, version, the idea of the inventory for that array, as well as capacity and various other metrics available from the API of that vendor's array. Then on the right side, all of the related resources, so the different nodes, groups, zones, file systems. And again, these are all dynamic. So you're gonna find different resources even related to the array, depending on the type of array and vendor model it is. Some might have LUNs and pools and so on. But I can drill into any of these. If I wanna see more information apart about this particular file system, simply click on that. Then I can see the block size different values available from that and drill into that a bit further. And then even go back to the parent. So here's my parent array and navigate back to that. For the arrays, we'll also right now collect performance details. This is from the top level array and these are gonna be coming from different subsystems on those processors. It will vary depending on the array as far as what management interface they make available to collect that data, but it is generally aggregated to be the top level and give you visibility from the array. What is the data rate, read, write data rate, latency, CPU. Some of these metrics will change depending on the uh, type of array or NFS or so on that you're, you're pulling. So I can filter for this certain metrics just as I was pulling there. So we even have FTP operations rate. I can go look at various time periods. I want to see what this has looked like over the past week. Let's update, change that, and see this data rate, network read, write data rate. I can even drag and zoom in to a particular period if I wanted to do that. And then I have the scroll bar here to go back and look at other days more granularly. Now, lastly, on the array is our resource map. So this will show all of the components from that system. So you can see on our ISIL on the top level array, I can even rotate that if I want to instead get a horizontal view. So whatever my preference might be, you now see the IP address to that array, then various different other resources related to that. And we can expand these out and see what relationships they have. 
So I expanded one of the nodes from the Isilon. And there we see there's different file systems and paths for that, as well as disks related to that particular Isilon node. So you can keep branching out these chains to see the relationships across all of these various resources on that particular system. Finish off for what's new with source discovery, there are also built in reports that you can find to pull out the discovered storage data. So this is available in analytics, advanced reporting, then in predefined reports, storage arrays. So you have the consolidated report to generate all the reports to get all the data, or you can run as needed. And you can see an example of that. So you can export these to PDF, Excel, CSV, uh, whatever formats you need. And for those that like to write their own SQL or use Docal, all of this data is available in Docal as well. So in the data dictionary, you'll find new views for the resources as well as storage array uh, elements. And for the final major change, there were overhauls to particularly right now F5 storage discovery and the way that data is being stored and presented. Uh, we plan to also make these same changes available and about to present available for Netscaler in Q2 of 2021. So you should be seeing that come up shortly. But to start just on discovery, it is primarily done through SNMP the same way. So not much is changing there, but there is an additional option to be aware of. So within network device options, previously everything was added as what we call devices with services and application components. And that would be the option still as the default when you upgrade, but going forward, it would be device and manage resources. And this would then use load balancers in the new resource model. So this would be the preferable one, but once you upgrade, if you have existing load balancer discoveries, they would still be at this option. If you want to use the new features, change this option, use device and manage resources and run the discovery again. Once you have done that, we can go into our resources and then look for our load balancers. Let's take a look at vendor resource type F5 and select that. So here's our F5 load balancer that's been discovered with, again, the related resources and our load balancer partition here. So I can drill into our load balancer itself, see different details, what IP it's managed for, the load balancer OS, what larger cluster it's a part of. Back to the top level of our load balancer resource. And let's actually see the different logical relationships of our F5 configuration. So have our load balancer here and the load balancer itself, and then the partition. So common is a standard global partition across F5. So you will have others listed here also. And then all of the virtual servers currently configured on that partition. And we can expand these out further and start to see the pool, all of the pool members from that virtual server. So for all the layer four relationships and load balance configurations you have on F5, definitely have a lot more granular detail and we can drill into these pool members to see their IPs, what ports they listen on. And this is going to correlate back to a device. So there should be a discovered device in this instance that will include details for that. So what we are also doing with these load balance data is now creating affinity groups for them. So I'll be able to look up by a virtual server or VIP, all the different affinity groups and they'll each have a dependency affinity group. So if I pull up that MySQL affinity group, we can then see all of the pool members from that and the relationship to them. So we can see that virtual server is forwarding traffic to that MySQL listener. Now, if this database system had other dependencies or relationships branching off from that, we can see from this virtual server view, the relationships to them. And if I go to the topology of any device, it's now gonna also highlight any of those load balance virtual servers and VIPs in the topology views as well. So as I'm viewing my different infrastructure relationships and affinity groups, we'll be able to see how our load balancer interacts with the services running on our infrastructure as well.